Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Thanks for joining me on Doc Talk today. We're going to have a great show. Dr. Shane Terrell from Production Animal Consultation is going to be here to talk about different shoot side diagnostics that we can do to determine the lameness of cattle in your feedlot. Everything from infectious to traumatic injuries, we're going to have it for you today, so stay tuned. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Well, Dr. Shane, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you having me on. You bet. Folks, Dr. Shane Terrell, he's a DVM and a PhD, um, is one of the veterinarians for Production Animal Consultation, otherwise known as PAC. Great to have him on the show, find him a time when he can get down here out of Nebraska into Kansas. Uh, and we're going to talk about the foot, basically about lamenesses and things to that nature. But your dissertation and your research, you've done a lot of work on cattle feet and different abnormalities. So can we just kind of talk out, start out by talking a little bit about the foot and, and some of the common things that we see? Absolutely. And when we think about diseases of the foot or, or causes of lameness, we think about first uh, infectious causes, which uh, is probably the ones that are most common. So we have foot rot, hairy heel wart. Um, are, are diseases that are uh, problems of hygiene, uh, muddy pens uh, that, call, or that have a bacterial component that uh, uh, creates an infection. Other, other com common causes that we didn't think was as common until we started uh, doing a little more aggressive uh, um, diagnostics, uh, looking a little um, more directly at, at some of these causes would be toe abscesses, sole abscesses, lacerations, um, those, those are primary bruises or, or hemorrhages of the, the sole area that, uh, if untreated initially, we can cause uh, other or can lead to infections of the joint. And so we end up with our secondary infections of sept septic joints, which is um, uh, a lot of times was misclassified as foot rot, but is actually a, uh, an infection of the, the joint itself uh, in which our outcomes are, are quite a bit poorer. Yeah, and, and didn't you say when you start to get from some of these things, if left untreated or uh, um, if the animal's not cared for, can actually lead to a septic joint or yep. wind up being uh, that kind of that chronic? Absolutely. So, and so those secondary infections or those septic joints can can come from either untreated uh, toe abscesses, sole abscesses, or foot rots, um, primarily. But in any of those causes that where we have loss of integrity of the um, of the area of the foot, so either th through the skin or through the white line of the, the bottom of the foot uh, where we can introduce bacteria, any of those can eventually lead to those septic joints. I think one thing that has been interesting from your research, which there's many things that are interesting, but you know, we used to be of the mindset that until the calf is so lame that it can't compete with its pin mates, if it's got a little limp, we're just going to leave it. Absolutely. But your, your research shows the sooner we get on it, the better chance we have of it uh, recovering. Absolutely, absolutely. Our outcomes, no matter what the cause, um, outside of a catastrophic injury of some, some sort, uh, no matter what the cause, timing and intervention is key. So if we can uh, address those when they're uh, early 
uh, hemorrhage of that toe and, and get those potentially drained or, or treated for, for prevent a secondary infection or if we can treat an infectious foot rot early in the disease process prior to infecting that joint, our outcomes are significantly better. Yeah, so that's what we're going to talk about, folks. When we come back from break, we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do by picking that foot up, making sure you, you get the proper diagnosis, doing it early, great intervention, better success and treatment success for your cattle. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ellen Unruh grew up in East Central Kansas and earned her bachelor's degree in animal science from Kansas State University before attending veterinary school there. She is currently working on her master's degree in veterinary biomedical sciences, studying heat stress in feedlot cattle. Upon graduation, Ellen will focus on food animal medicine and do beef cattle research work. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune. Snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide radio and TV. The all new Better Horses Network. Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom-made vaccine because every situation is different. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Shane Terrell, who's a DVM PhD, heads up research and, and also is a practicing veterinarian for production animal uh, consultation. He's located in Nebraska, and we are talking about lameness and about early diagnosis in the foot. And you have some tools here. Yep. That, that you're going to talk to us about for a little bit. Absolutely. If we're if we're looking at intervening uh, for a lot of our our causes, first we got to make sure that we have the tools in place so we can um, first properly diagnose those animals and secondly properly treat those animals. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that uh, we provide an environment that's safe for both the animal and for the caregivers who are trying to diagnose those animals. So so the first thing we need to do is either uh, consider tilt tables uh, for proper restraint of the animal. Uh, if we don't do that, what, what I utilize primarily is, is a rope and a pulley system to lift up those seat feet to make sure that we securely um, uh, get those feet secure so we can properly diagnose those yeah, animals. And I, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, and I can remember back to my dad and, and myself in practice, when you, you pick that foot up, have your wash bucket, and a scrub brush, get that thing cleaned up so you can really see what you're dealing with. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Clean that foot up. Um, once we clean that foot up, then we're going to go ahead and do some further diagnosis where some of these tools come into play. So the most important thing that we can have around is a pair of hoof testers. Uh, you've probably seen farriers um, possibly have these around or, or your veterinarians uh, try it for equine lameness diagnosis. But uh, it's an important tool to identify uh, areas of sensitivity in that foot. So when we're looking at specifically toe abscesses and sole abscesses, we'll take the hoof testers, um, go ahead and squeeze, and it'll be a pretty a firm squeeze on that toe uh, to try and either we'll identify a, a pain response where that animal is going to flinch or try and, and move its foot uh, based on the pain response, or else we could, could find a, a very soft 
um, empty socket where there was an abscess that's gone ahead and, and either moved out uh, through the coronary band or into the, the joint itself. Um, when we're testing the, the sole, across the sole, we're going to take, take the hoof testers and, and we're going to go ahead and squeeze across the back, uh, the back of the bottom of the foot uh, in the sole about two-thirds of the way back. Uh, those were where we're going to find prim her primary find most of our sole abscesses. Uh, sole abscesses was a diagnosis we didn't think was a problem with feed yard cattle or beef cattle in general. Uh, it's very common in the dairy industry, but as we've picked up feet and, uh, and pushed for further diagnosis, we've found that it's not only there present, it's fairly a common lesion. Um, it's just misdiagnosed and, and underdiagnosed. And I think that's what, you know, a lot of this is about is that we've just called everything a foot rod or a club foot and gone on about our business and what your research and, and your diagnostic work has shown is that man we're missing the boat on a lot of these you know absolutely absolutely and that's um, you know what what we've called again foot rots commonly are septic joints that are secondary to these some of these primary um, uh, uh, traumatic or, or concussive uh, type of lesions and, and so, but, uh, so you're looking at at uh, toe abscesses, sole abscesses yeah. as being your two top non-infectious. Yes, yeah, non-infectious types. Some lacerations uh, in addition, uh, but uh, but those are the two two most common non-infectious or traumatic type of causes. Great. Well, we got we got to take a break here, but when we come back, we're going to talk about what we're going to do uh, when we get that calf's foot picked up, some of the things that we're going to do on diagnosis and some of the tools to help treat them. You're watching Doc Talk and we're glad you joined us. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Howdy, this is Kurt Pate with the Tip of the Day. When I go to a ranch or a farm or a feed yard or something, the places I like to look is their tack rooms and their medicine rooms. If they're organized, clean, and taken care of, and ready to do anything on the farmer ranch, I can tell that place is pretty organized. So I try to do the same thing with my place. I, uh, I keep my saddle room real nice and organized. I keep my medicines that don't need to be kept from freezing in a real organized, clean place that uh, nothing can get to. I have found when you keep things clean and organized, it makes it more effective and efficient on the ranch. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. It takes vision, dedication, hard work. It takes knowing who you can trust. At Zinpro Corporation, we have more industry-endorsed research behind our trace minerals than any other company. Proof that our patented performance minerals help improve overall animal health and performance. Lots of companies make claims. At Zinpro, we generate results. Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom-made vaccine because every situation is different. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Shane Terrell. 
We're at Kansas State University, and Dr. Terrell is a veterinarian who practices with veterinary production animal consultation, and he also heads up their, their research as a research director. But let's talk about, uh, let's start out with foot rot. Mm -hmm. Okay, I pick up the foot. What am I going to see with foot rot? So foot rot, typically we're going to see symmetrical swelling. Uh, so uh, between those two claws, we're going to see it, uh, even swelling between those claws. Uh, so we're, that's going to cause those claws to go ahead and, and separate to yep. some degree. Um, when we smell that foot, we're going to have a necrotic uh, smell. The bacteria, the name of the bacteria is Fusobacterium necrophorum, which in itself says that necrotic or, or really foul smell. Um, so we'll, we'll have those. Those will be the most diagnostic. Um, so if we, if we see that animal with the symmetrical swelling at the chute, um, we don't need to necessarily lift that foot unless we see swelling above, above that up into the, the joint itself. And so, so that's the one instance where we can go ahead and, and leave that foot down, just treat it for foot rot and, and move on. So. Okay. And then uh, the other one that has not been as common until recent years is, is the hairy heel wart. Yeah, and again, probably underdiagnosed and misdiagnosed as foot rot previously, but hairy heel wart's gonna be a bright red lesion. Uh, typically, there's different stages, um, M1 through M4 stages of that, but in general, it's a, a very painful lesion uh, on the back back part between the claws on the back side of the, uh, the heel area. Um, it's gonna be bright red in some instances. Uh, in, in other instances, it's just gonna be kind of a, a area that's that's paired out and, and kind of uh, um, we see some ulcerations in that in, the, in that spot. So <clears throat> when we see that, we'll we'll press the back part of the, the heel. We'll see it have a, a very profound pain response when we press in that area. Uh, parental antibiotics haven't been very successful in th those cases, and so our treatments are going to be more topical treatments and. and uh, yeah, for that diagnosis. And so you'll use foot baths and different things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. And foot baths and wraps and, and uh, are, are all means of treatment. You bet. Well, I think that understanding these two infectious agents, um, hairy heel wart's uh, pretty contagious, right? Uh, that's that's somewhat debatable. We 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 set up those conditions in a pen. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to produce that disease. Uh, experimentally and so we don't really know how contagious it is or if we just in that pen we've set up the conditions for an outbreak itself that bacteria is present uh, in the GI tract and in these animals and so so whether it's highly infectious or not uh, if we set up the conditions the uh, the environment for that to th thrive it can pop up in a big way you know pen pen conditions you made mention of that are are pretty important in controlling a lot of these diseases what are some of the more common issues in pens that you see so in general mud and is is one but any any time where we produce a condition where those animals never have the ability for that skin to dry out so water pooling around water tanks if we don't have have proper drainage around water tanks um, you know, we can control mud as best as we can. In some periods of the year, it's in some environments, it's tougher to do than than uh, than others. But in general, creating an opportunity for that heel area region to dry out is, is necessary. I think some of the times, you know, when you get that skin on the hooves, it's real soft, and you have the areas that could cut, yep. you know, the dry areas in the pen, wet and dry areas together. So it seems like if the pen's totally wet or totally dry, we get along Absolutely. a lot better. Absolutely. All right, folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to get into some hoof pairing <laughs> uh, here, and we're going to talk about those toe abscesses and, and sole abscesses. You're watching Doc Talk. Thank you. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Horn flies are a nuisance in a production loss, so getting rid of the problem is important. What I like about the vet gun is you don't have to go out there weekly to treat them with a topical fly applicant. It has some duration, it lasts, you see the increase in weight gain, it just works. 
I've used it in our 1500 cow calf operation and it makes me more confident in saying, hey, this product's gonna work on your operation too. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. It's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Shane Terrell. He's with Production Animal Consultation, where he's a veterinarian and also has his PhD in production animal medicine working on lameness. And, and so talk to me a little bit, we hadn't got to the nippers and the, and the knives, um, about what we're going to do with, with these toe abscesses. Yep, so when we move into the uh, more traumatic causes, toe abscesses, sole abscesses, and you certainly consult your veterinarian on, on proper treatment of these or, or their, their, their recommendations, but in general we need to allow, um, allow for the undermined sole to, to be removed, and so if there's pus in the forming in those places, we need to get that pus drained and remove the sole, sole, or sole that uh, is present over top of those. So when we toe abscesses or aggressive or wilder cattle, yep. aggressive cattle, poor cattle handling, rough surfaces yep. will lead to all these, right? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So it, a lot of these lesions, specifically toe abscesses, will be, um, we'll see early in the feeding period in the feedlot, uh, either whether they happened in the transport phase or the sale barn phase or through processing at the feed yard, but we'll typically see those uh, in the first three or four weeks of, of cattle on feed. And one of the things that you said when I, when I heard you speak was that if you don't treat them, that abscess is gonna go somewhere. Yep. There's, and where, where are the three places it can go? In general, it, it can either move up and into the joint and, yep. and set up in the joint, and that's when we get septic joints. The, uh, the second opportunity is for it to come come up the hoof capsule and, and uh, come out the, the coronary band. And so, yep. so it'll come with that, that hoof to skin junk, junction somewhere. Uh, and if it does, that'll lead opportunities for no, other secondary pathogens to come in and cause a sept or, uh, an infection. Or the third place is, is to go out the bottom of the foot in the white line area. Uh, very few of them we see do that. Most of them move, move up somewhere. But, but if we don't do something with these, a lot of times we'll, we'll lead to septic joint. And, and I heard you say one time, that you have a calf that's lame and the next day it's not lame, sometimes those things will bust and they'll feel a little bit better, but yeah. then, then yeah. they just go It down doesn't down. mean our outcomes are better. Yeah, right. exactly. So tell me a little bit about what we're going to use and what we're going to do. So it, it, I use a, a hoof nipper. We can have 10 inch to 14 inch hoof nippers in a, in a chute. When I lift up the feet, I like the smaller ones myself, but what our goal is is to provide an opportunity for those those toes to drain, those toe abscesses to drain. What I'll do is, is I'll make a uh, um, I'll, I'll nip that toe perpendicular to the ground to provide uh, opportunity for that pus to drain forward, not down. So I, we don't want to cause a hole on the bottom of the foot, so we get more dirt and, and mud into that area. So, and every time that that foot steps down, it's going to work like a piston and push that pus out of uh, gotcha. out of there. So it, it's going to work to our advantage there. Um, so, so that's going to be important for for uh, the toe abscesses. When we move into the sole abscesses, what we'll want to do is, is find that, uh, and what we're going to do is, is actually pair any undermined sole out kind of like an apple, mm -hmm. like a bad spot in an apple, and we'll just 
keep taking that soul out um, so there, until we get to the junction of true tissue to, from the soul and just remove all that uh, uh, undermined soul that, where we've had pus in before and that allow a new horn to grow in over top of it and, and, uh, and provide a, a place for that to drain. And, so, and if you were going to use these, make sure we have uh, the proper sharpen, sharpening equipment. This is a rubber <laughs> wheel with a, and a felt wheel. If we have dull knives, we aren't going to get anything accomplished. So make sure we invest in the seventy, eighty dollar investment to make sure we we these knives are effective. Well, thanks a million for all you're doing, and, and thanks for bringing this awareness uh, to our industry. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Great work, folks. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what we do here on the show, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Shane Terrell. Thanks for watching Doc Talk, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.